and that brought positive results. Even though it was not an extraordinary year for the Indian economy, it was a modest year. We are likely to grow under the new series by 7.4%. I think from here the time for takeoff comes. Now I think there are two major factors which we must bear in mind. The first is that the entire architecture of the center state financial relationship has been redefined. The states were getting 32% plus some extras. Now they get 42 plus 5, 47%. So every tax New Delhi collects, 47 goes to the states. So I have straight away down by 10%. If you look at the All India picture, and we calculated, total national taxes, center and state, the states used to get 49, center still had 51, till last year. This year it is 62 in favor of the states. So the Indian states are financially more powerful and I think this is a great development. It's a great development because they are the ones who are going to spend the money on the ground. They are not to be seen just paying salaries and come rushing to Delhi, give me more funds for simply sponsored schemes or otherwise. Now how do I make up for the loss of uh, revenue? The size of my case, take has shortened. Therefore next year we have to grow faster. If we go on the projected growth rate of 8% plus, our revenue projection is about 15 plus, 15 to 16%. Last year's projection was overstated because 4.1 was the fiscal target set not by me, but by Mr. Chidambaram, which I had adopted. Halfway through the year, I couldn't change it. And therefore, to reach 4.1, what is the amount required? There are only two ways you can meet the fiscal target. You either earn more or you spend less. Now, we did a little both. But this year is my year. And therefore, I have to be transparent about every fact. Now, if my revenues go up by 15.9 or some, as we are projecting, with this growth rate, I make up for the shortfall in terms of the size of the center's cake by tax buoyancy. The second important factor is the other investment destinations, barring the United States, mm -hmm. are not doing particularly well. And all competing economies are under stress themselves. And therefore the world can't drive on one engine. You'll we'll need multiple engines. And everybody thinks it's India's chance to fly, if I may use the phrase from the economics. Oh, yes. And therefore there's a positive sentiment about us. Now what do we do in this positive sentiment? I can't suddenly increase uh, expenditure this year. The one fact we have noticed it, despite a positive sentiment, a legitimate comment, on the ground is infrastructure moving. Look at the highways. The public-private partnership model is not working. We've got the, we've inherited the highways back. Uh, Mr. Vajpayee left behind a sector which was going to boom. And we've got a, a, a very lethargic, underperforming sector. So everybody is agreeing that you have to put public investment. Now, we've created a new model of this investment, which I think is, the, besides federalism, the second big point. I increase central spend on infrastructure by 70,000 crores. This will have its impact. I am now going to allow railways, highways, and irrigation projects to, carry, uh, to, to raise money through tax-free bonds. And three, we've earmarked separate funds, some we, I have just announced a contribution, TSUs will also contribute. We start with a 20,000 crore, government or state institutions will contribute. Your capacity to leverage private funds including international funds is going to be several times over. We recently had a conference last month in Delhi where most of the fund managers, the biggest ones in the world came and said, let the government put in money, we'll put in our, our bit. And they can put in about 90% of it. Now, this will become a major instrument for funding infrastructure. This is the second big idea. The third big idea, when you say, it's, is it the Amartya Sen approach? Well, frankly, even though I want the economies to grow, I can't be unconcerned about the poor people. Mm -hmm. And growing economies must also be concerned by, with, uh, social spending. So I have not, uh, we have not compromised on the social sectors. We maintain the spending. 
plus we had an emphasis on social uh, your, 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 your programs which are security, social security programs now we i would at best say i don't want to overstate it we just started the idea so between the middle classes and the weaker sections there is a common thread okay the middle classes entirely pay for themselves mm -hmm. so i have allowed them a 50000 rupee annual deduction yes. put your money into the pension funds so you pay less taxes so by the time you are 60 years old you have a huge corpus and i am told the nps is giving a 11% return today right. so the money is going to multiply several times so even independently nps is a safe and a great investment this money in turn will be used the more it spend the more it's used for a national cause infrastructure and various other investments as far as weaker sections are concerned we only giving a glimpse you pay 1 rupee a month you get an accident insurance of 2 lakhs you pay less than a rupee a day same to paisa a day you get a life insurance of 2 lakhs and you pay a nominal amount of about 250 rupees a, a month during your earning life you get a 5000 pension inherited by your spouse inherited by children mm -hmm. children will get the corpus yeah now this is partly contributory partly the government of india from will give a budgetary support i have said in the pension scheme will give uh, an equal support for 5 years and then i am also cleaning up the amounts which are unclaimed amounts lying in your ep ppf uh, which are the unclaimed amounts and by legislation they will be transferred for social sector programs for the aged people senior citizens okay that's the whole object actually so there are three big uh, issues uh, anil uh, would you like to uh, take it further on the special on the fiscal devolution plan that you know very clearly the the shadow of the 14 finance commission is all over your budget so like you rightly said it is squeezed your the the cake has diminished for you <clears throat> but uh, it in, in, implicit in it in what the 14 finance commission said and what you have said in your budget speech seems to be some kind of a new development ideology for this country in terms of uh, your the resource sharing is now based on devolution not on grants If there is a greater incentive in your budget to create entrepreneurs to create people who can create their own jobs so can you just elaborate a little bit on that you see as far as devolution is concerned i think uh, discretions must end and therefore i will give to a particular state because it's a bjp state and somebody else is a congress state i won't give money to i think this is a story of the past both by the finance commission and by my budget the non nda states are greater beneficiaries because on some developmental criteria or the need to spend more in them the prime minister has said the eastern part of the country is less resourced is more resourced but less affluent now we have to walk the talk so we have to give andhra type concession to those areas etc the second is consistent with our philosophy of allowing manufacturing professionalism all this to grow each of our revenue proposals is directed in that direction now take a small project most indians are the best fund managers globally they managing manage funds and they shift to singapore immediately and manage funds out of singapore because if the individual is in india you'll be the whole fund will be taxed in india now isn't there a need now to rationalize our law as far as that is concerned the it sector technology coming in isn't it desirable to give them some customs uh, right. rebate manufacturing sector last year i corrected them inverted duty structure input cost will go up therefore we corrected that aberration as far as the point which uh, mr bhattacharya made on uh, uh, the middle classes well i must say that there is a uh, uh, an attempt by us even last year and this year mm -hmm. that these are salaried people who pay income tax they are the ones who struggle their entire life to save a little money do i or do i not put more money in their pocket it increases spending compelling them to save last year i said i increased by 50000 rupees the housing uh, loan deduction i increased atc savings by 50000 rupees now it's it was considered time health care for instance now people must be as a part of my social uh, security program people should be incentivized to buy health care uh, health insurance premiums yeah. they must have health insurance policies 
so that you can't have a society which in terms of illness we know how much it costs now to get a, uh, 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 an unwell person treated and small concessions like uh, 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 transportation now it's been 800 rupees since ages now anybody who uses a vehicle or even uses public transport today uses the metro in delhi can't manage in 800 and therefore to to earn his spending so that must be allowed as an expenditure now 800 becoming 1600 is no extraordinary favor it's just a brush with reality let's um, our uh, mr mr let's our, uh, our uh, viewers uh, from the non english speaking uh, states uh, lose out on what has been discussed uh, dikshita will be asking some questions in hindi अरुण जी मोदी सरकार के इस बजट से बहुत आशाएं थी बहुत अपेक्षाएं थी हर तबके को चाहे व्यवसायिक व्यवसायिक क्षेत्र को ले आम आदमी को ले किसानों को ले ये बजट उन सारी अपेक्षाओं पर कितना खरा उतरता है देखिए सरकार का जीवन कार्यकाल पांच वर्ष का होता है और आपको तो धीरे धीरे अर्थव्यवस्था को पूरा पांच साल में खड़ा करके एक चुनौती पे लाना है पूरी अर्थव्यवस्था को देखो तो हम अर्थव्यवस्था को दुनिया की सबसे तेज गति से बढ़ने वाली अर्थव्यवस्था बना सकते हैं आठ परसेंट पे हम आगे बढ़े और आगे हम दस परसेंट का सपना देखें और अगर कहीं हम दस पंद्रह साल इस गति से चलते रहे तो देश को गरीबी में से बाहर निकाल पाना संभव होगा दूसरा हमें गरीब की भी चिंता करनी थी उसके लिए पैसा रखना था और राज्यों को भी पैसा देना था अब ये बैलेंसिंग एक्ट था हमें इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर भी बनाना था और फिजिकल डेफिसिट की भी चिंता करनी थी अब ग्रोथ के बीच में और फिजिकल डेफिसिट के अनुशासन के बीच में एक कहीं ना कहीं तो मेल होना चाहिए तो इसलिए मैं केवल तीन परसेंट तक की यात्रा दो साल में तय करूं और इस बार इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पर आधा खर्च कर दूं तो उससे तो विकास रुक जाएगा देश का तो मैंने वो बैलेंस से एक्ट किया कोई बहुत तो आफत नहीं आने वाली है कि अगर ये दो साल की बजाय मैं तीन साल में यात्रा पूरी कर लूं हर साल मैं पचास पचास हजार करोड़ एक्स्ट्रा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर में अगर डाल पाता हूं तो देश के हाईवेज देश के पोर्ट्स देश के इरिगेशन सिंचाई की योजनाएं देश की रेलवेज इन सबको लाभ मिलने वाला है और इसलिए इन सब क्षेत्रों की हम लोगों ने चिंता की है सो गरीब की मध्यम वर्ग की और देश का उद्योग तेजी से बढ़े इस देश में एक खोखली बहस है मैं हमेशा कहता हूं कि आप गरीब के पक्ष में हो या उद्योग के पक्ष में हो मैं तो दोनों के पक्ष में हूं जब तक उद्योग से मैं कमाई नहीं करूंगा तो मैं गरीब की सेवा कहां से करूंगा इसलिए मैं इसमें अंतर विरोध नहीं मानता हूं ये दोनों साथ चल सकते हैं आपने बजट भाषण की शुरूआत की थी एक कविता की पंक्तियों से कुछ तो फूल खिलाए हैं और कुछ और फूल खिलाने हैं मुश्किल ये है बाद में अब तक कांटे हैं पुराने तो ये बजट उन कांटों को किस हद तक निकाल पाएगा बहुत सारी परेशानियां थी उद्योग जगत की और विदेशी निवेशक भी थोड़ा आने में हिचकिचा रहे थे क्या अब ये बजट के बाद अगर निवेश का जो चक्र है वो चालू हो पाएगा पिछले नौ महीने देखें बिना कोई क्रांति लाए हुए जो देश की टैक्सेशन व्यवस्था थी निवेशक उसको देखता था और इस देश से दूर भाग जाता था अब उसको कैसे परिवर्तित करना है जितने विवाद से धीरे धीरे उन विवादों को सुलाने का काम हम लोग कर रहे हैं और नौ महीने में हमने किया भी है कम से कम एक प्रेरणा बड़ी है कि इस देश की न्याय व्यवस्था निष्पक्ष है इस देश की टैक्सेशन प्रणाली उतनी खराब नहीं जितनी हम सोचते थे अभी भी बहुत सुधार करने की जरूरत है दूसरा इस देश में भ्रष्टाचार है हमने कोल ऑप्शन से और चार तारीख को जो स्पेक्ट्रम ऑप्शन होगी उससे ये साबित कर दिया कि सरकार ये अधिकार अपने पास नहीं चाहती कोई हम पिक एंड चूज करें उसकी आवश्यकता नहीं है तो मैंने दो बार बजट भाषण में कहा कि मतलब एज द स्कैम रिजीम्स कोरप्शन एंड स्कैम रिजीम्स आर अ थिंग ऑफ द पास्ट अब हमने कहा हम कानून लाएंगे कि सारे कॉन्ट्रैक्ट किस तरीके से इश्यू किए जाएंगे उसमें भी हम अपने पास अधिकार नहीं रखना चाहते बाजार तय करें एक क्लियर ट्रांसपेरेंट तरीके से उन विवादों को हल कैसे करेंगे उसमें फिर सरकार के मिनिस्टर और सरकारी अधिकारी उसमें चौधरी बन जाए उसका कोई आवश्यकता नहीं है उसकी भी एक व्यवस्था उसके अंदर हम बनाएंगे 
मैंने यहां तक कहा मैं और मैं इस बजट का सबसे क्रांतिकारी सुझाव अगर एक आप मुझसे पूछे तो मैं मानता हूं हम लोगों को निवेश के लिए बुलाते हैं कहते हैं हमने एफडीआई बढ़ा दी हमने रेड कार्पेट ले डाउन कर दिया वो जब इस देश में आता है या देश का कोई भीतर का निवेशक है वो तो पूंजी लगाता है फिर पांच साल उसको दफ्तर से दफ्तर भगाते हैं कि तुझे परमिशन कैसे मिलेगी तो मैंने कहा मैं एक कमेटी बनाऊंगा उसके आधार पर कानून बनेगा रेगुलेटरी गाइडलाइंस होंगी आप अपना काम शुरू कीजिए अगर गाइडलाइन का उल्लंघन करोगे तो कानून आपको रोकेगा अन्यथा आपको व्यवसाय करने का अधिकार है मतलब okay. कम से कम अगर इसमें हम सफल हो पाते हैं तो मैं इसको सबसे बड़ा सुधार उस दृष्टि से मानूंगा इफ आई कैन कम बैक टू द फोर्टिंग फाइनेंस कमीशन रिकमेंडेशन एंड हाउ दे इम्पैक्टेड योर बजट विल इट बी करेक्ट टू गेट दैट इम्प्रेशन दैट this is uh, influenced your taxation strategy uh, little bit and let me illustrate how it has it may have uh, influenced your taxation strategy uh, which is uh, that you have abolished wealth tax which was a shareable resource but you have replaced it uh, with uh, a 2% extra surcharge which we will not share and if you take uh, the the figures 1000 crore in the wealth tax we are losing 42% of that will be around 400 420 crore Which you had to give to the states, whereas 9,000 crore of 2 percent surcharge will be entirely go to the centre. Similarly, if you look at the oil, the petroleum, petrol and diesel prices, where you are substituting the cess, uh, substituting the increased duties that you had levied during the year with cess, which will again come to you. So, taken together, 80,000 crore of annual extra revenue and 9000 crore of surcharge so, is, I, is the taxation strategy so, getting impacted by the fourteen finance commission I think on the first question of wealth tax you may not be very accurate okay. because what persuaded my thinking was why must i have a high cost low yield tax okay lakhs and lakhs of people are filing returns they will go and understate their jewelry from the jewelers they go to the real estate people and understate the value of properties then they file a return that returns are now the whole energy of the department is spent in those lakhs of returns and finally we end up getting 900 crores or 1000 crores from the whole wealth tax and with all its attendant consequences so it's a very high cost tax and very low yield so why not raise the tax itself therefore therefore rather than allow that to continue at some stage after gst a large number of cesses are going to be subsumed in the taxes Let's be clear. After all, service tax on service tax, there was a cess which we subsumed into the uh, as a tax itself. So with GST, I don't. It will only be a transient phase. Therefore, I decided that tax on super rich who can afford to pay it increase that surcharge by two percent, so that we don't want to favour the rich. The rich must pay a little more, and in, by sacrificing one thousand. saving so much of governmental energy eliminating corruption and harassment and i end up collecting 9000 instead of 1000 but states lose out completely so no, states have gained so much okay. uh, uh, that I, and the and the idea behind this was not states losing out when you talk of petrol there may be partly a point in what you say my idea was not to make the state suffer and we realized it when we were raising this when oil prices come down how is that money to be shared hmm. 11 times we pass the benefit to the consumer hmm. on one or two occasions the oil companies have returned the retained the benefit and they've retained it because they are suffering from inventory losses hmm. you see they buy at 80 dollars and they are now selling at 60 so 30000 crores was the inventory losses of the oil companies after these are public companies they can't be made to suffer the third area is the money coming into the central revenue either by excise or by tax now manufacturing revenues were low and therefore we needed to supplement our resources we have to run a government but this money we now intend should entire a large part of it must go into highways it's a part of my priority on infrastructure a little bit goes into railways so mr suresh prabhu has shown that he means business he's not gone in for more trains he says let me first put my house in order his operating ratio has come down to 88 i hope next time it comes down to 85 or 86 so he has more money for development of the railways rather than just meeting its own expenditure and this money of the cess will go to 
substantially highways and partly railways. Okay. Now, who 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 owns the highways or the railways? The center of the state is the people of India. These are trust organizations for the people of India. So if they are to be built out of my budget, nobody should grudge if I am spending money on highways and railways. I am not spending this money on paying salary to my employees. Fair enough. Fair enough. Anil, do you have a question for Mr. Sinha? Yes, sir. You know, actually, um, <coughs> I'm curious about the fiscal math underlying the budget. Uh, it talks about disinvestment in a big way, uh, particularly strategic disinvestment. And in your FRBM note, it says you're looking at even SUTI. So is that true? I mean, you're going to look to divest from uh, the SUTI corpus of yours? Well, if you look at the fiscal math, I think uh, what we have in place are very moderate assumptions. Uh, we are thinking that the GDP growth rate is going to be between 8.1 to 8.5 percent, somewhere in that range. And then, uh, of course, we have to look at nominal GDP when we look at tax collection. So overall, our sense on tax collection, because we think nominal GDP is going to be about 11 to 12 percent, our overall tax collection number is 14 percent. Uh, assuming a very slight buoyancy because growth is going to pick up, plus of course we have excise taxes that we have with petrol as well. And as a result of that, we think that the revenue collection number 14% is quite reasonable. Now, in addition to that, there are non-tax receipts as well. And in the non-tax receipts, there are various categories like dividends from public sector enterprises and so on, but disinvestment indeed is also a major component of that. And our estimation based on the... the let's say, you know, 60, 65,000 crores on the disinvestment side. So when you add all of that up, I think the fiscal arithmetic uh, adds up quite cleanly and nicely. Yeah, actually, uh, just taking it a little further, the strategic disinvestment which you talk of, so in the, you specifically mentioned SUTI. So this is something which has been discussed by several finance ministers in the past. So are you signaling that you are actually looking to divest these are UTI holdings, the former UTI holdings. So are you looking to divest? We have, we have a number of different assets. Suti is certainly one of those assets. There are many other assets as well. Companies that are not listed right now that could be listed. We have companies that are already partially listed that could be disinvested further. This is a decision for the cabinet to take exactly which assets and which sequence and when uh, to, uh, to do this. Of course, we'll have more time to plan all this out this year because we have the full year to do it. But in principle, it's on the table. In principle, you know, anything sensible is always on the table for the government. Okay. Arun Ji, I want to go back to that question that the middle class budget is middle class budget, but the middle class budget is the most important hope that the crores is a little bit, a little bit. You have not done that. What was the reason behind it? Look, this question पहले आप देखिए इस देश के लोगों में आज साढ़े तीन पौने चार करोड़ लोग इस देश में टैक्स देते हैं इनकम टैक्स और देश की जनसंख्या की तुलना में लगभग तीन चार परसेंट लोग टैक्स दे रहे हैं किसी भी देश की टैक्सेशन प्रणाली में इनकम टैक्स देने वालों की संख्या बढ़नी चाहिए ये एक चुनौती है वो घटनी नहीं चाहिए और इसलिए इस परिभाषा को हम लोग सोच दें कि आप केवल स्लैब को बढ़ा दो स्लैब कभी बढ़ सकते हैं मैं उसको रूल आउट नहीं करूंगा लेकिन सरकार के पास फिजिकल स्पेस कितनी है ये भी मुझे ढूंढनी पड़ेगी और राज्यों को इतने पैसे देने के बाद मेरी जो फिजिकल स्पेस थी बहुत छोटी हो चुकी थी लेकिन मैंने स्लैब्स न बढ़ाकर लोगों को मजबूर करने की कोशिश की कि वो बचत करें जो इस देश की बचत 36 फीसदी होनी चाहिए वो उनतीस तीस फीसदी पे आ गई मुझे उसको वापस 35 छत्तीस परसेंट पे ले जा रहा है तो मैं लोगों को एक इंसेंटिव दे रहा हूं कि वो बचत करें दूसरा वो बचत करें अपने भविष्य के लिए करें तीसरा उनकी बचत से इस देश का निर्माण होगा क्योंकि ये सारा पैसा देश के निर्माण में लगेगा तो इसलिए केवल मैं उनको छूट दे दूं कि जाइए और खर्च करिए और इसको कंजम्पन सोसाइटी बना दूं कंजम्पन सोसाइटी की तुलना में बचत करना भविष्य के लिए बचत करना और देश के निर्माण के लिए बचत करना ये मुझे बेहतर ऑप्शन लगी मैं एक केवल उदाहरण के तौर पर आपको बता दूं मैंने एक टोटल लगाया है पिछले साल मैंने तीन तरह की रियायतें दी थी इस बार भी तीन चार तरह की रियायतें दी हैं ये दोनों वर्षों की मिला लो तो जो डिडक्शन हैं या एग्जेम्शन हैं वो दो लाख करोड़ के करीब दो लाख रुपए की पड़ती है एक व्यक्ति को पुरानी वाली इसके साथ जोड़ ली जाए 
तो आज कोई भी टैक्स पेयर चाहे इन सब का लाभ उठाए तो मैंने अपने भाषण में एक चार्ट भी दिया है साथ में चार लाख चवालीस हजार दो सौ करोड़ दो सौ रूपये यानी लगभग साढ़े चार लाख रूपये की डिडक्शन एक व्यक्ति ले सकता है तो इसलिए सात लाख आठ लाख कमाने वाला अगर चाहे कि मैं टैक्स ना दू तो प्लानिंग आदर्श स्थिति में कर सकता है अब उसके पास इतना पैसा बचेगा बचत के लिए कि नहीं एक दूसरा प्रश्न है और ये सारा पैसा उसकी अपनी सेविंग्स होंगी उसके अपने भविष्य के लिए होंगी और देश का निर्माण भी इससे हो जाएगा और मेरा सेविंग्स रेट भी बढ़ जाएगा घरेलू बचत बढ़ाने के लिए आपने ये योजनाएं आप ये लाए हैं सोना जो है हमारा अधिकांश तक हमारी जो बचत है वो सोना खरीदने में जाती है आपने एक नई योजना निकाली है इस बजट में बताई है ये किस तरह से सोना खरीदने की जो आदत है इसको किस तरह से बदल सकती है और हमारा आयात किस तरह से कम कर सकती है वेल्थ टैक्स जब था अगर उसके पक्ष में मुझे बोलना हो तो ये नॉन प्रोडक्टिव एसेट्स कम से कम उभर कर सामने आते थे हालांकि लोग उसको अंडर एस्टिमेट करते थे लेकिन एक लगाव है सोने से इस देश का और अपनी बचत है तो सोने में लगा दी जाए अब सोने का विकल्प भी उनको दिया है और सोना है तो आप क्या करेंगे इसमें तीन सुझाव मैंने दिए हैं पहला ये कि जो सोना है और इसमें ज्वेलरी आइटम नहीं होंगे जिनके पास रॉ गोल्ड है आप जाकर उसको मॉनिटाइज कर सकते हैं बैंक में रख सकते हैं और आपको नॉमिनल ब्याज भी उसका बैंक से मिल जाएगा दूसरा ये आप सोना मत खरीदिए सोने की कीमत का गोल्ड बॉन्ड खरीद लीजिए जो लोग सेविंग्स में डालते हैं और जो बाजार में सोने का दाम बढ़ेगा उस बॉन्ड के ऊपर उतनी आपको प्रॉफिट होगी और तीसरा इस देश में जिसको हम गिनीज कहते हैं गोल्ड को एंड विदेश में बने हुए हमारे देश में चलते हैं त्यौहार पे दिए जाते हैं लोग गिफ्ट करते हैं लोग घरों में अपनी सेविंग्स उसमें रखते हैं तो क्यों ना हम अपना जो सोना देश में इतना आया हुआ है उसको गोल्ड कॉइन जिस पे अशोक चक्र हो भारत सरकार का औपचारिक हो और ये सारे के सारे जो आते हैं ये स्मगलिंग या बिना ड्यूटी दिए हुए अधिकतर इसमें से आते हैं तो इसमें इसको लेजिटिमाइज क्यों ना किया जाए हमारा अनुभव पिछली सरकार से भिन्न है पिछली सरकार ने मई के महीने में ठीक उन्हीं दिनों जब चुनाव के परिणाम आ रहे थे और नई सरकार बदली जा रही थी तो उन्होंने एक नई योजना लाए कि इस देश में सोना आएगा उसको कुछ एक्सपोर्ट हाउसेज लेकर आएंगे कुछ छह लोगों के नाम दे दिए इस देश में भयंकर मात्रा में सोना आना शुरू हो गया लोग लाते गए उसको होर्डिंग कर रहे थे नवंबर के महीने में हमने उसको वापस कर दिया और कहा जिसको सोना चाहिए ले आए और 10 परसेंट पर सोना गिर गया अब दाम कम हो गए क्योंकि तो जिन्होंने होर्डिंग की हुई थी उनको अब बाजार में बेचना पड़ा तो सोने को अगर हम औपचारिक रूप से रोकते हैं तो फिर वो अनौपचारिक रूप से आता है ये एक बीमारी है इस देश में तो इसलिए सोने को आप मॉनिटाइज करें गोल्ड बॉन्ड्स लाएं आप एक देखिए हम अर्बन हाउसिंग की बात करते हैं एक अर्थशास्त्री ने उस दिन सुझाव दिया कि आप रूरल हाउसिंग की सोचिए और वो बेचारों के पास क्या है बैंक से पैसा लेने के लिए वो अपना सोना रख के बैंक से पैसा ले सकते हैं थोड़ा बहुत हर घर में होता है गांव में भी होता है कई बार और इसलिए मुझे लगता है ये एक अनप्रोडक्टिव एसेट को प्रोडक्टिव एसेट बनाना ये योजना हमने बजट के अंदर लाने की कोशिश की मिस्टर जेटली इफ यू टर्न टू द योर अनाउंसमेंट्स विथ रिगार्ड टू द कॉर्पोरेट सेक्टर यू हैव मेड द बिग अनाउंसमेंट और अ प्रोमिस दैट यू विल रिड्यूस देयर कॉर्पोरेशन टैक्स रेट फ्रॉम थर्टी परसेंट टू ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ओवर ए पीरियड ऑफ फोर ईयर्स एंड यू ऑल्सो हिंटेड एट दे विल बी प्रूनिंग डाउन ऑफ द एग्जेंशन Uh, is there a timeline on how you go about it? Uh, it will create a lot of doubts in their corporate sector's mind. How the exemptions will be tackled? If you can give us some idea on that. I tell you. You see, ideally, I would have loved to do it this year. This is added to my seriousness that I've been in business. Now, why do I want to bring corporate tax from 20, 30 to 25? I have to attract investment in this country. Not only international, even domestic. Now we have 30 percent plus surcharges and sales, etc. Look at all the ASEAN countries; they average 21.9. Our competing economies are almost 10 percent cheaper than us when it comes to the cost of tax. So investors will ask, why should I invest in India when I can get a cheaper facility elsewhere? So on competition, I lose out. 
माय ओन इन्वेस्टर्स आर सेटिंग अप यूनिट्स इन अदर आसियान कंट्रीज बिकॉज दे आर लोअर रेट्स ऑफ टैक्स सो आई नीड इन्वेस्टमेंट टू क्रिएट जॉब्स एंड टू रिमूव पॉवर्टी सो आई लूज ऑन टू काउंट्स फर्स्ट माय इमेज इज ऑफ अ हाई टैक्सिंग कंट्री सेकेंड ऑन अकाउंट ऑफ दीज एग्जेम्शन्स वॉट इज एक्चुअली थर्टी परसेंट दट्स टू आई एंड अप गेटिंग ओनली ट्वेंटी थ्री परसेंट ऑल एस सो इन एन आइडियल टैक्स स्ट्रक्चर यू ब्रिंग द रेट्स डाउन मेक दम ग्लोबली कंपेटिटिव बट अलॉन्ग विद ब्रिंगिंग इट डाउन यू फेज आउट दी एग्जेम्शन्स Now I don't want to go back on the promise of what exemptions are there. There are, there are some exemptions which have a sunset date. Yeah. Those which don't have a sunset date, we can phase them out easily. But I didn't do it this year because I didn't want to take everybody by surprise on one day, saying it's going. But will the exercise of phasing them out happen during the year? But we will have to start a program for phasing out. And phasing out, since I have said kept a four-year timetable, the phasing out can be in consonance with. Uh, the reduction also okay so i don't want to profit here out of this i want to make india's tax globally competitive yes. because to attract investment and at the same time uh, uh, phase out uh, the exemptions which can be phased out if still somebody thinking has to regain for a larger national interest that's a different matter mm -hmm. the other advantage of this is going to be the tax man discretion will end your tax return will be very yes. simple and the third advantage is bulk of the litigation of tax is on exemptions and so i think that litigation comes to an end so we must will have a neater cleaner smarter tax system in the country hani you have a quick question on the black money part which is a key part of your budget so one i wanted to understand the logic in the context of that you already have a money laundering well that was the uh, finance minister explained the rationale of some of his moves uh, the markets uh,